Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habati fillah I wanted to remind myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to leave the traits of jahiliyyah the traits of ignorance and more specifically I'm referring to racist traits traits of racism that all of us are infected by this disease in one form or another through prejudice through blind prejudice or through pure racism or tribalism however it has no place in Islam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam described it all as sifat of jahiliyyah characteristics of jahiliyyah so usikum wa nafsi bi taqullah azza wa jalla we have to fear Allah wa ta'ala. And the reason I wanted to even deal with this topic is due to the statement that became widespread of the brother Saeed Rege, Rage and what transpired between him and brother Shadid Muhammad. And the mufasid that resulted from it meaning the harms and wickedness that resulted from it and from that wickedness is there was an increased or an increase in hatred between muslim communities based on race based on tribalism and there was an increase in racism and giving up wicked or a bad image to Islam and the believers in addition there was a devastation to the muslim brotherhood because if you survey what's going around on facebook and all the social media uh the various social media uh channels and social media forums or forms of social media you'll see an increase in wickedness and an increase in evil from namima and riba backbiting and slander cursing and belittling of whole races of people and stereotyping we also see from the wickedness that resulted is an increase in mistrust and in reinforcement of st existing stereotypes and a weakening of the Islamic brotherhood racism and prejudice it exists everywhere but it is unacceptable islamically wa qala subhana fa dhakir fa inna fa'ati dhikra sayadhkuru man yakhsha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then remind for verily reminding uh, by reminding you've reminded the one who wants to be reminded meaning the mu'minun in order that they would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says sayadhkuru man yakhsha so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then through the remembrance that they will have uh, they will have fear meaning fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commandments so we have to remind one another as brothers and sisters. So I didn't have the opportunity to listen to Shadid's response, but I did hear what Saeed had mentioned. And when I first heard what he had to say, it angered me. And I felt that it was something that needed to be addressed. So I was about to put the pen to paper. And then shortly thereafter he made a public apology. I didn't listen to the full public apology, but what I heard was sufficient. I thought that he was trying to honestly rectify a wrong to the best of his ability. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayra khata'ina tawabun." All the children of Adam commit sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So we have to accept from someone when they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and they try to rectify a wrong without making a in-depth analysis of their intention. Because that is, those are amur qalbiya. Those are affairs we don't have in ghaybiya. We don't have the ability to look in the man's heart. Many people will argue it wasn't sufficient or he did, he did it out of pub, uh, response to public pressure. Whatever. He did try to rectify. Because the fact of the matter is the racism already exists within us. The prejudices are already there. So if someone slips and at least they tried to clean it up, as a Muslim, we should accept that from our brother, even though we know that there's some underlying issues. But to think you're going to reform his or her underlying issues by spreading more wickedness and causing enmity and hatred between the Muslims, never. By talking about the, the faults of such and such culture. Such and such culture has this. And such and such culture, they don't do hygiene. And such and such culture, they're pedophiles. And we, we know the stereotypes. But all of that is wicked. And none of that will benefit us Islamically. Now, if we want to have the affairs of Jahiliya, like the nation of Islam or something, okay, perhaps. Perhaps that will benefit you. You'll have one up on this race, and this race will then think they have one up on you, and maybe it'll even go to bloodshed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Verily, the believers are brothers. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ فَمَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ شَيْءٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and whoever pardons his brother for what he did. Letting us know that that's a sif, sifa min sifat al-mu'mineen. That's a trait of the believers. Is they pardon one another. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيَخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ And those who came after them, they said, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا O oh, our Lord, forgive us and our brothers, those who came before us in Iman. What is that? That's a characteristic of the believer. The believers don't just say, you called me this and my people this. I'm going to call your people this 27 times worse. That's not a sifa min sifat al-mu'mineen. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ أَيُحِبُّ أَهْدَكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكَلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتٍ Does one of you prefer to eat from his dead brother's flesh? What is that? That's tahrima, backbiting. That shows it's impermissible to speak about one another behind their back. So all of these are traits that are madhmum. These are all traits of wickedness. Racism, backbiting, ghiba, and namima. And this is what the, the door that has been opened. We know the Prophet والسلام, was going in a by, by some graves. Okay? And he said... In, uh, مَرَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى قَبَرَيْنِ فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمْ مَنْ يُعَذِبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَهْرَهُمَ فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتْرَ مَنْ لُبُوْ وَأَمَّا الْآخِرَ فِكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَ The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam was going in, in a graveyard and he passed by some graves of some Yahud, some Jews. He said, verily they're being punished and they're being punished for something which the people do not think is great. As for one of them, is he used to, uh, you know, not clean himself properly when he went to the bathroom, akramakum Allah. As for the other, is he used to spread namima? And namima, ahabatafillah, as the ulama mentioned, this is to spread tales of wickedness throughout the community with, with the intent to spread wickedness. This is exactly what's going on now. The people have gone insane. And the people have exhibited the worst of the traits of jahiliya, which is a type of shirk, as we're going to find out. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, Al Muslim akhul Muslim. The Muslim is the brother to the Muslim. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ مُسْلِمْ أَخُ الْمُسْلِمْ يُشِدُّهُ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا That the Muslim is the brother to the Muslim and they strengthen one another. 
They don't belittle one another. They don't mistrust one another. They don't hate one another because of their race. They don't belittle one another and destroy one another's honor and destroy the honor of whole peoples. And even more importantly is when you're in a position of da'wah. You're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows us that the people our students of knowledge need to be even more cautious with their tongues. They're responsible for community of, of, of the believers. They're responsible for setting the example for the believers. They're responsible for showing the, the, the way to the believers through example and through their speech, not fomenting hatred and enmity between the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَتَعَوَنْ عَلَى بِرِّ وَتَقْوَى Cooperate in piety and God-fearfulness. And taqwa, habit fi it refers to what? It refers to doing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding his prohibitions. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَعَوَنْ عَلَى إِثْمِ وَعُدْوَانِ And do not cooperate on sinfulness and enmity. Isn't this what's going on? People posting on a sister's page saying, your people are slaves and we're going to roll on you. We're going to do this. All these statements of jahiliyyah. It shows that this person is bankrupt. This person is evil or they have traits of evil and wickedness and they allowed. So this only exposed the divisions and the hatred that we already have. So that's the good of this is it exposed you, all of you who are on and fomenting from your mouths and saying the most wicked things about the believers because they're not your race, they're not your tribe, they're not up to your standards, you wouldn't marry from them. Well, now that the slobber is dripping on your shirts, you've been exposed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knew your deviance in the heart and that you really weren't following what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said about the Inama Mu'minun Ikhwa. You, 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 you had another program. You said, you interpreted that to mean, verily my home, my people are brothers. Verily my tribe, they're brothers. Verily my race of people, we're brothers. But you forgot the Mu'minun. You forgot the Itiqad of Ahl Sunnah. Had the Itiqad hata. This is also an issue of creed. If you believe you're better than others, then you've got an issue in your aqidah. You need to get right with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because you have the sifat of the people of J the days of jahiliyyah. And those were disbelieving people. And those were people on shirk and kufr, was zandaka wa ilhad. So you don't want to follow them. That's not the sunnah you want to be. You want to be on the da'wah to ahl sunnah. As our Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi said, and this is what I loved about that Imam, aside from his, his stern and staunch love for the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you went to places like Damaj, what did you see? You saw Libyans, you saw Somalis, you saw Indonesians, you saw African Americans, you saw white Americans, you saw white French, you saw African French, you saw this, you saw that, Germans, whatever coming together to study the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No one's perfect, but they came for that reason. They didn't come for their tribe. And the imam said, da'wah to ahl sunnah, da'wah to da'wah to min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam ila sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam. He said the da'wah of ahl sunnah. We're not talking about the da'wah of the African Americans. We're not talking about the Dawah of Farrakhan. We're not talking about the Dawah of, of, of uh, Rahwani or, or this tribe or that tribe or the Oromos or the Tigriyes or the Amhara. We're not talking about that Dawah. We're talking about Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. He said Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is the Dawah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, and part of the Alaihi Wasallam, the people of the Sunnah. Or the family of the Prophet وسلم, includes Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because they call to the book in the Sunnah. They call to the madhab of the Salaf al Saleh. They didn't call to the madhab of 
Ahle Bida and Ahle Zeg, the people who go astray, and they didn't call to their comb. That's not what they called to. And that's not the Dao to Ahle Sunnah. And anything other than the Dao to Ahle Sunnah is Mithmu. It's sinful. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَلَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَذْكُرُوا نَعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَمْ إِذْ كُنْتُ مَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنَعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Ali Imran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says وَذْكُرُوا نَعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَمْ Remember, reflect upon the ni'mah, the blessings of Allah upon you because Many of us, if we come, came to Islam, we were in kufr. Some of us were in gangs. We hated each other just for the colors that he wore. For the set he was claiming. People killed each other for that stuff. But now the ni'mah of Islam, the light of Islam, took from zulumat to lanur, from darkness to light. And some of you, because of your tribe, pushed to whatever, fighting and killing, no marriage, takfir, every kind of wickedness, this one is ray something, ray hammer, ray this, hatred. From Hiragesa, Somaliland, Bosaso, Mogadishu, hatred, killing. But if we reflect on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with kuru na'matullahi alaykum, Reflect upon the ni'mah of Allah upon you, which is Islam, which is Islam with Sunnah. إِذْ كُنْتُ مَعْدَانِ فَأَلَفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبَكُمْ You were enemies. And Allah brought أَلَفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبَكُمْ He subhanahu wa ta'ala, with this new light of Islam, this new light of Sunnah, this new light of Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, healed your hearts and made your hearts as one. Verily the believers are brothers. So it don't matter if you're white or you're black or you're green. I'm green. It doesn't matter. It's from China, Japan. Japan. I don't care. He's from Ahl Sunnah. That's the most important thing to me. He loves Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and uhibhu lillah. I'm not going to talk about his food and his culture. And now this is from Hikmah, Habitifillah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَلَفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنَعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَ And then you have become, he, he healed your hearts. You were enemies before. He healed your hearts, you know, made your hearts have love between you. And then you became brothers. You, you became brothers from that. Lillah. That's powerful. And there's so much nasus from the book in the sunnah. Think about the story of Abu Dhar, radiallahu ta'ala where he got in an argument with another sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala an, and then he, he said, you're the son of a black mother. And for them, the way they said this, this was a way of, you know, cursing him and his mother. Nothing wrong with black. But the point is, is they had their prejudices that they had to deal with. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, rep reprimanded him and said, is it, you know, do you have the traits of Jahiliyyah? Do you still have the traits of Jahiliyyah? And there are so many nasus like this, showing us that it is impermissible, it is haram. And I advise those students who foment this, who propagate this because you are in a position of leadership even if you don't want to accept it, even if you don't believe it, even if you think you can still have your opinion. I appeal to your hearts and I appeal to your knowledge because you have knowledge, Ikhwan. Clean it up. Clean it up and take back every segment of anything you said wrong. And don't culture shame others. And we know that, for example, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, he, he spoke about the one 
who curses his own mother. And so the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, they were like, who would curse his mother? Or who, you know, his father, I believe it was, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, one of you curses the father of the one you're arguing with, and then he in turn curses yours. There is so much hikmah in that, and I just want to share a piece of that and how it, it relates to what, what's taking place. So here you have a situation where someone is saying something about indicted a people, okay? And he, he tried to clean it up, okay? The response may have been more severe, and I didn't listen to the response. I only heard from all the people, but I just didn't want to involve myself in that stuff. But the reality is, is it's, let's just take it as a lesson. So I can't say what the brother, how he responded, but it seems that war and blood and people are slobbering about this. And people are making ta'asib and al-wala wal bara based on this. I saw a comment, and this would really encourage me to talk about this, a comment from someone I know on Facebook openly saying, calling Saeed, Saeed something, you know, in a very bad way. It's like, wow, the man tried to apologize. Even if you don't like him, if you think he's not on the sunnah or whatever, okay, that's something else. But make sure it's diniyah, but that sounds like ta'asab. So it's made the communities, you have a whole army of Somalis now, because this is kind of taking place between those communities, but it's it's greater than that. It's the Syrians, it's the uh, Egyptians, it's the it's everybody. We all have our races, it's the, Indian, in, uh, the, the, the Indians and Pakistanis. We already know we, we should stop being black. We already heard that one. So we know that. But this has just gotten out of control. So it's very important for people to take leadership positions because they're in leadership positions and clean the house because what you've left, you don't want to leave a sunnah of jahiliyyah, a sunnah of al-wala based on your race, based on your tribe, based on your people. But you want to make it on the book and the sunnah. So as du'at al khair is you got to call the people to khair. And you got to clean it up. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.